Hello Lava friends, I like to talk about rate limiters in your application. I'm pretty sure you have heard about rate limiting your APIs, but you can also rate limit any kind of action in your code. Sounds interesting, right? Today I will show you both. This first example is this more kind of typical rate limiting example. So we have this endpoint here, which could be some kind of API where we get the weather and we return some response on the right. You can see if I refresh, this is what I get. And of course, our APIs are not free. We, want, we don't want users to call them as often as possible. So we want to limit that. And the way we can do this in level is inside a service provider. Let's switch you one to my app service provider. I can create a new rate limit. And the method that we need is four. And here I'm providing first a name. So let's call this maybe just weather. And the second is now closure where we have access to the request. And in that here, we're going to return a limit. And here we can say we want to create a new limit per minute. So let's say five times per minute is what we want. And now what we can also do is we can define how we want to group this. So how do we want to identify the user so that we can say, yeah, this user can only try this five times. And one way also what Laravel recommends what you can do is you can use the user itself if this is given. So if it's given, then we want to use the ID. And if not, what we want to use is the IP of the request. So the user's IP. So again, we're creating here a new rate limit. We're giving this a name so that we can use it later. And we're returning here limit, limit of five attempts per minute. And this is valid for a specific user ID if this is given. And if not, it's for a specific IP. All right, so this means we go back to our um, rod here. And here I can now add a new middleware. And this one is called Throttle. And here level ID, the plugin that I have installed here in PHP Storm already knows that I have this weather rate limiter. So this is the key which you add here. Okay, let's try it out. What did we say? Five times per minute. Refresh, 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 refresh. And too many requests. Here we go. So 429 is a typical status code that you would get back in such a case. Of course, if we clear out the cache, we can start from new again. One, two, three, four, five, and here we go. So this is a very easy way to yeah save some resources on your server for your API so that not everybody can just spam you all the time. Of course, you can get here quite cre um, creative in how you want to create the limit. So we could also say that if there is a user, so if the user is locked in, for example, then we want to return a limit. Let's say the user has then maybe 10 attempts and we're grouping this again by the request IP like this. And maybe let's copy this here. And if the user is not locked in, it's not a user that we know, then we only allow five attempts. So this is also a way where you can define, or maybe if your user has a specific role in your application, then you can also create different limits. So that's also something that you can do in level. There's a lot more to cover. So please check out the full documentation for this. But yeah, that's basically the idea of rate limiting an API endpoint. For our second example, I have this endpoint here, create transcript where I'm echoing out this string. And this is what you can see here on the right in the browser. So let's imagine we have an application where we provide a service to create a transcript of a video. And maybe we allow this for every users, but maybe we want to limit this so that people don't overuse this. And there are a couple of ways that we can do this, but I like to use here the rate limiter and the too many attempts method here. Let's start with the key. So the key again is a string. Let's call this transcript. We can define this and it will be unique by this key. That's why I want to use the IP of the user like this here, max attempts is what we also want to provide. And let's say we want to allow this five times per minute. That's what this is. And then if this is going to get exceeded, I'm going to return to many attempts with a nice emoji. 
All right, and if this not is being triggered, then we want to create our transcript, which we would do here. And then after that, what we also need, we need to increment our limit. That's where we need to copy our key here again so that we increment it for the same key. And yeah, let's leave it like this already. Okay, so what happens now if I go to the browser? Let's refresh this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And here we go, too many attempts. We tried this now five times and now the six times we get here into um, this condition here because this is now matched because we made too many attempts. Of course, we could also increment this by a specific amount. So let's say five here. And I'm also going to clear the cache. So this means the first time we should see creates transcript again, but the second time it already doesn't work anymore. So maybe it is a good idea when you have different services and all of them have some different points of how valuable they are. And maybe um, this transcript service takes five points and another service take one point and then your user has a total of, I don't know, 10 credits per week, month, something like this, you name it. This is, yeah, this is the kind of stuff that you can do. And I think it's good to know that rate limiter is very cool for these things as well. I hope you learned something new or at least I was able to help you refresh your memory about rate limiting. I would love to know which actions are limited in your code. Let me know in the comments. See you. Bye.